Hi, I'm Allison, and today we're going to show you how to do a fairly easy zombie makeup look with supplies that you can get at any local party supply store or costume supply store. Um, they're fairly inexpensive, and it's really easy to do, so I hope you enjoy. Okay, so what I'm going to do to start out with is cover her face in kind of like a general pale shade. I'm going to mix in a smidge of green just to give a bit of a rotted look. So I'm going to use a spatula and take off some of the kind of more cream colored makeup and I'm going to mix it on the back of my hand which has already been cleaned by the way. For time applications usually um, I would say about a half an hour can can be done any zombie can be done in about half an hour. One thing to remember is to go down the neck Anywhere that's going to be visible, basically, you should you should work with. For time's sake today, I'm not going to take it below the neck, but um, that's often what people forget is the neck and the ears, because they look alive and everything else does not. Face is pretty much paled out, so we want to start adding some more details. So now I'm going to start with um, the red grease paint. Stipple it around the mouth, so you can kind of just. You don't have to be really precise with this. You can bring it down the neck a bit. Zombies are slow. Right now. So I'm gonna take the stipple sponge. It's just kind of like a wiry little, little thing that's made of plastic. And that kind of adds almost like a rashy effect or broken blood vessels. The yeah, we're going to darken around the eye area just using a black and the cream color mixed together. Got a little bit of red in there, but that's not going to really do anything damaging to the look. So you just kind of go around the eye area and darken it up a bit. Not too dark because zombies don't really have black eyes. It's going to take a bit more of a dark color and kind of contour. So anywhere that sort of recedes in the face naturally, you kind of want a bit of darker color there and we're going to blend it some more to give the, the sunken in effect. You don't have to apply it perfectly at first because we're just going to blend it anyways. What I'm going to do next is start in with the latex and we're going to give the skin some texture. This is the liquid latex. If you're allergic to latex, I strongly suggest you do not use latex. Just a hint there. So I've just put a little bit of the liquid latex in the cap. You should usually use like a small bowl or a little plastic container. Um, so I'm just going to take some with the spatula and I'm going to apply it where I want the texture on the skin. So you do a very thin layer because you do have to consider drying time as well. So I'm just putting it kind of up around the mouth area. Oh, that smells lovely. And then I'm just going to take some tissue and rough it up a bit and it's going to stick to the latex. So just whatever sticks, keep that on there. Whatever doesn't stick, you can take it off because we just take more latex and put it on top. One thing to remember with the latex is when you're applying it, Use something like a, like a spoon or the little spatula. If you use a latex sponge in the latex, it will stick the sponge to the person's face and pull off all the latex. So it's kind of, latex will stick to other latex, so you don't want to use a latex sponge. So I'm going to take the blow dryer on the cold setting. Very important, you do not want to burn anybody with a hot setting. <coughs> so this is cool, but it's also going to help the latex dry faster. So now that the latex has been dried, it's not sticky. So it's really important to make sure it's dry because once you start to go in with your sponge and it's not dry, you'll start to peel it off. And when you go in anyways, you want to dab it. You don't want to rub it. I'm just going to mix up a darker red using the edge of my brush. You can use a smaller brush. So what you want to do is in the deeper spots where it's kind of um, been textured, where it's deeper, you want to go darker, just for dimension's sake. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking our fresh scab, and it's very sticky and kind of thick. 
We're just going to kind of work it a bit so it's a little more movable. And we're going to basically apply it just kind of wherever, but I like applying it in with the texture because it really adds a little more yucky. with some more of the colors. I'm going to use a green just to give some more stipple and I'm also going to use some of the other colors we have in my hand just for more burst blood vessel effect. I'm also going to grab a bit of the purple because I find that purple kind of helps to give more of a bruise effect. Okay, so now that we have her looking pretty zombie-like, I'm going to go in with the fake blood. And you can pretty much do whatever you want with fake blood because it's a lot of fun and Main goal here is to look like you've been eating bricks. One thing I find that really makes a great zombie look is tooth blackout. So what you want to do is take a little bit and I'll, I'll get you to just take it on your finger and rub it into your teeth. It will come off once you brush your teeth. It's not flavored, it's not really gross, but it really does a lot for the look. So unless you're a really heavy smoker, you will need the tooth blackout, which is available at um, any of the places that I've mentioned before with party supply stores and such. I find that um, having a zombie with pretty shiny white teeth doesn't really um, make it believable. Don't smoke kids, use tooth blackout. Basically what we have is just like a really gross looking piece here. Lots of makeup everywhere, pale the skin out, lots of blood, and you're good to go. So I hope you enjoyed watching this, and I hope you have fun making your own zombies. Are you a filmmaker in town? Do you have a film and a trailer for your film? Perhaps you have a trailer but no film. Well, Flix TV wants to air your trailer on our show. All you have to do is go to this website and we'll show our favorite trailers on the show in a couple of weeks. So get busy uploading and you can go to www.flixtv.com to find out some more details. Shannon Lane's hair, styled by Lynn's hair.